Good evening. Welcome to Squamish Christian Fellowship. Please join us in our worship this evening.
upon your name. Thank you so much for your graciousness and for your goodness to us. That you have made a way for us to be with you, to be in your presence, to be saved from our sins. Thank you, Lord, because it is all because of your doing and not because of us. We ask for your forgiveness if there are times that we have neglected you that we compromise, Lord. But then, because of your grace, because of your mercy, we are back here again before your presence, Lord. And we just want to thank you for 
sustaining us, Lord. For the past half month of this year, you've been so faithful. That's why tonight we ask your Holy Spirit to speak into our hearts and into our minds as we listen to your word. May you help us to understand you more, to know you more, and to love you more. So that at the end, we will be glorified in our lives. We praise you, Lord, and we give thanks to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Squamish Christian Fellowship's online worship. I hope you had a great week. It was a weird week for us, raining and uh, sunny and rain and sun. And I hope that as we welcome a new week of life, it will be a hopeful week, it will be a wonderful week, it will be an amazing week as we also celebrate uh, Canada Day on uh, July 1st. I hope that you have plans for this week and I hope that your family is uh, doing well right now. And as we continue to worship God, as we continue to meditate His words, as we continue to do our online uh, worship, we might not be uh, in a physical place up to September probably, but we are one in God's Spirit and we are one in, in our one as a family that we would like to continue worshiping God and growing into uh, His presence even we have this uh, pandemic. Let's pray. Lord, as we worship you this evening, as we listen to your words, may these words be life for us. May you remind us of our that, that our lives are not eternal in this world that our lives are temporary in this world. So teach us, Lord, to invest in eternity, in eternal life, in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We're going to talk about the rich man and Lazarus. In Luke chapter 16, uh, verses 19 and onwards, there was a rich man who was dressed up in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. And on the other hand, in his gate, there was a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. So we have two characters here. One who is really a rich man, and living in luxury every day and then the other one was Lazarus and this and, and Lazarus was uh, he, he is sick he has sores and he is just waiting for the food that are falling from the rich man's tables mga tira tira lamang, leftovers and he was sitting on the side of the gate and even the dogs are coming to lick his source but at that time the time came that the beggar died and the angels carried him in Abraham's sight the rich man although also died and was buried so here's the thing that is the great equalizer you're rich you will die you're poor, you will die. We don't know when, we don't know what age, we don't know how, but it will happen in our lives. So the story is Lazarus died and the rich man died. But when Lazarus died, he was brought in heaven. He was brought in the place of Abraham. And the angels brought him there. In verse 23, in Hades, Hades, I know this is what we call the, the hell. It's like a mountain of fire, fire that doesn't stop. So hot. Where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He knows Lazarus. Why? Because Lazarus was staying in his 
every day waiting for the food, waiting for the leftovers. And the rich guy was living in luxury every day. In verse 24, so he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. Look at his frustrations. He wants Lazarus to, to dip the tip of his finger into water and put it in his tongue so his pain, his agony in fire will be eased even a little. And that is the description of Hades. That is the description of hell. It is so hot. It is a fire. It's, it is a mountain of fire. And the rich man was so mad and was so sad and was in agony because of the fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you receive your good things while Lazarus receive bad things. Now, he is comported here and you are in agony. Lazarus was living in poverty. He was, living, he was sick. Even the dogs are coming to lick his sores. While the rich man knows that Lazarus was in his cave, he did not do anything. He lived in his luxury every day. And then what happened? They all they both died. The rich man saw Lazarus was with Abraham, and he was uh, entertaining by the angels. While the rich man was suffering in Hades in hell, and he was pleading to 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 Abraham that he will send Lazarus to dip his finger, the tip of his finger, so he can have water even just a drop of water so he can ease the pain the suffering his agony in that place so what's the problem here is it bad to be rich is it good to be poor i think no it, it, it doesn't it doesn't go that way but the problem is that the rich man lives in luxury every day while there's someone, Lazarus, was in his gate living in poverty, living in nothing, and he's doing and he's not doing anything. And we're gonna see later that this guy doesn't believe in God either. But you know, if, if you are poor. And in this story, in this place, in this uh, nature, if you are poor and you are hopeless, your only hope is God. And you're calling to God and you believe in God that after this life, God will bring us into His place for eternity. We might have pains into this world. We might have sufferings into this world. But it's not eternal. All these things will pass, even your richness and even your pains, even our joys in this world and sorrows, even the big houses or small houses. These things will pass and we will go into eternity, either in God's kingdom or into Hades or into hell. So we have to choose. We have to decide. In, in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 to 28, it says here, Yes, as people are destined to die once, and after that to face judgment. We will all die once, and after that we will face judgment. That's what happened to, to the rich man and to Lazarus. They die once, and they, they face judgment. In verse 28, So Christ was crucified once to take away the sins of many. He will appear a second time not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for Him. So while we still have chance, so while we still have 
while, while we are still alive, choose now. And choose wisely. Choose life. So what happened next in verse 26, when, 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 when the rich man was, was uh, planning to, to Abraham to send Lazarus to, 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 for Lazarus to, to dip his, the tip of his finger, but, but Abraham said, we cannot do it in verse 26. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot and nor can anyone cross over from there to us cannot when we die th there's no such thing as purgatory you're not gonna wait for 40 days and you know even you call a pastor or a priest or a minister to pray for a person so we cannot do it we cannot save that soul even we pray for it if someone dies, he will face judgment. And if you believe in God, you'll be, if you believe in Jesus and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will be part of his kingdom. You are, will be part of his family. And, and there is a separation. There is a great chasm that separates heaven and hell. And when we die, the ones who are in heaven cannot go to hell. And the ones who are in hell cannot go to heaven. Not even a priest or a pastor or a minister pray. We cannot do anything. It's only God. That's why it is so important to decide and believe in God while we are still alive. And it's not late yet so what happened he answered then i beg you father send lazarus to my family for i have five brothers let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment that's why i told you a, a, a while ago that this the rich man doesn't believe in god because his family even his his brothers he knows that this his brothers when they die they will go in that torment Abraham replied, they have Moses and prophets. They have the Bible. They have the laws. They have the teachings of God. Let them listen to them. And verse 30, the, the, the rich man said, No, Father Abraham, he said, But if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said, If they did not listen to Moses and prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. As a pastor... I have been laughed off. I have been denied. I have been bullied. And people will just laugh on the teachings. People will think, what are you doing? It's weird. <laughs> the rich man was pleading to, to Abraham, send Lazarus to my brothers. But Abraham said, you have Moses. It means the law, the Torah, and the prophets. Let them listen to the teachings of God. Let them believe in God through, through the Bible. In, in our times, listen to the words of God. Read your Bible. Believe in God now. Church is not the way of salvation. You're not going to be saved when you enter a church. You're not going to be saved when you... Uh, do a membership to a church never believing in God believing in Jesus will save us that whoever believes in him in Jesus will not be perished will not perish but will have an everlasting life John chapter 3 verse 16 Believe God while you can, you still can. Have faith on Him. Live according to His will. Live according to His purpose. Because one day death will come to us. We don't know when, but surely it will come. 
And it's a matter of being prepared. It's a matter of believing in God. And it will change our destination. One night, let me close with this. One night, Jenny and I were sleeping. Maggie was at work. We were at the bed. Lights closed. And Janine asked me one, one thing. She asked me, Daddy, am I going to be, am I going to be old? And I said, yes. And what will happen to people when we get old? Then we will die. She became silent. And she was crying. And she was crying and crying. Why are you crying? Ask her, why are you crying? A four-year-old. She's four years old. Why are you crying? Because I don't want you to die. She told me, I don't want you to die. I want you to care of, to take care of me even if, I grow, if, even if I grow old. And I was crying too. Because I was hearing these words from a four-year-old. And she said, I don't want to die too. I don't want to grow old, so I do, I'm not going to die. But sadly, this is the truth that we will all face. It will all happen to us. But one thing that I am praying, I may not give her house or new cars or uh, send, send her to big schools and universities. But what I am praying, Maggie and I are praying, that Janine will live according to the purpose of God. And he will believe in God. Because I know, I know, like the rich man who knows that his brothers will go to that place of torment. I know. That the best thing that I can give to my family is faith in God. To believe in God and have that eternal life. The assurance of salvation through believing in the name of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, let us enjoy life in this world. Let us live. I'm encouraging you, especially now it's summer. Go outside. Live, live. Go camping. Enjoy your life. Go for a road trip. My, my, my family, Maggie and I and Janine, the whole family will go for a road trip a couple of weeks from now. Do it. After two months, it will be dark. It will be cold. It's, gonna, it's hard for us to go outside again. Enjoy life. Work hard, enjoy life. Be luxurious sometimes. Yes. But you know what? Don't forget God. Don't leave God behind. But instead, put God in the front of everything. Even your summer vacation. Even your work. Even your dreams, even your plans, put God first. And I pray that time will come. All of us, all of us will be in the kingdom of God, celebrating, worshiping Him, and singing with joy and thanksgiving. I pray that you and me and our whole family will be in the presence of God and in the kingdom of God. As we close tonight, O oh God, as we worship you, as we listen to your words, as you remind us that our life is not eternal in this world, but there is eternity after this life. And it's up to us to decide to choose where to spend the eternity in your kingdom or in hates or in hell so i pray god that as we 
lay our back as we lie down in our bed, rest and watch a movie this evening or have dinner or just sit back and relax. May we all think of you. May we all think of our life after this. And may we decide to believe in you and accept you as our Lord and Savior. I pray for everyone who listens and who's hearing this message. That you will open our hearts and our minds. And we will receive these words. And we will receive this message fully. And we will live believing in you. And following your purpose and will in our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. And now as we welcome a new week of life, may we all go face the week with God's love and grace and mercy. With the salvation of Jesus Christ, through His blood, we are saved and healed and clean. And the Holy Spirit, that will guide us every day so we can live according to His purpose. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. Good evening everyone, and thank you for joining us at Squamish Christian Fellowship's Online Worship. I'll see you again next Saturday, 7 p.m. Canada time, and 11 a.m. Sunday, Philippine time. Happy Canada Day, everyone. God bless us all. Amen and Amen.